Buena. For the very detailed comparison between the two systems, and uh, Lars will uh, continue uh, focusing on some uh, 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 EU issues and national cases, if I understand correctly. That's correct. Thank you, Sultan. And uh, I would also like to take the opportunity to t thank uh, Boris and his colleagues for, I think, this outstanding event here. And I will now focus on the European Union, and I will first summarize um, the development of private uh, damages actions in the EU. I will then address some of the legal concepts that are currently discussed within the EU. Also, I may shorten a little bit on this. And finally, I will provide uh, – oh, oh, that's sufficient um, – I will provide uh, a short overview of recent cases uh, in the EU. Uh, private uh, – and I have my slides, I think. Can you give me this? And I can – Okay. Uh, private antitrust uh, damages actions uh, are a relatively new phenomenon in the EU. There have been a few older cases mainly based on national antitrust law, but uh, generally the 2001 decision uh, by the European Highest Court in uh, Courage against Crean is considered as a triggering event for uh, <coughs> private uh, damages actions in the EU. And the court held in that decision that any individual must be entitled to claim before member state courts damages for loss caused to him by anti-competitive conduct. And what is clear to most of us today was at that time, so it's only uh, 10 years ago, uh, not evident. For instance, in Germany, my home jurisdictions, uh, jurisdiction, court generally dismissed uh, actions for damages uh, that were based on cartel infringement. The prevailing view was that, uh, that victims of cartels had no standing in court because the cartel provisions were mainly in the public interest and uh, not, uh, did not give individuals a right to claim uh, damages. Um, then you see, and you may all know, that in 2004 <coughs> there came the uh, regulation 1000 through, uh, 1003 into effect and it granted for the first time in national courts uh, the full power to apply Article 101, or at that time, Article 81. But these changes uh, did not at least immediately uh, prove to be sufficient, or as the Commissioner for Competition at that time, Nelly Cruz, uh, put it, the powers for national courts are in place, but where are the cases? Um, a 2004 study, and I will be short on this, um, commissioned by the European Commission had analyzed the status quo at that time uh, of private actions in the EU, in the EU 25 member states at that time, and the study found uh, that uh, the picture of antitrust damages actions in the EU was, and I cite now, one of total underdevelopment. And already a new few numbers in the study uh, confirm this in the entire EU 25 with its almost 500 million inhabitants and certainly no lack of, of cartel infringement. Uh, the study only identified 50 judged uh, cases for damages actions and this in almost 50 years since the EU antitrust law came into effect in 1957. The then uh, Commissioner for Competition, again, that was Nelly Cruz, uh, made it very clear that she was determined to change this. And you see here, aside from her, at a conference in 2006. So what did the Commission do? Uh, the Commission first uh, published a so-called green paper, a pol policy paper on this topic to start a process of public consultations. And following uh, the following four years of <coughs> intensive uh, consultation, after that the Commission uh, prepared a draft directive, i.e. a legislative act, that leaked in June 2009 to the public. And with this directive, the Commission aimed to, to introduce minimum standards uh, to be implemented at the member states level to, uh, into their existing law uh, to facilitate uh, private actions. However, there was some, uh, some strong opposition from the European Parliament, so the directive was withdrawn at the end of 2009, just bef days before it was uh, to be officially published. And uh, to my knowledge, at the moment, the Commission is only active with respect to one specific obstacle to private damages actions. Uh, in this February, 
it launched a broad consultation on common principles for so-called collective redress, and Bojana already addressed this. The period ended in April, and basically the feedback that the Commission provided has recently been published on the Commission's website. In any event, uh, despite the withdrawal uh, of the directive, I think the draft directive uh, provides a fair summary of the current thinking uh, within the EU on this topic, and they ma therefore makes sense to have a closer look at least at some of its element. And we heard it, but I, let me briefly summarize it. There were initially some contradicting uh, statements by the Commission as to the objective of private damages action in the EU. And in principle, Bojana said it, one can think of two main objectives, and uh, one is deterrence, generally combined with the punishment of the infringers, and the other one is uh, only, I would say, compensation of the victims. And the draft directive made it very clear that at least as a minimum standard, it takes a compensatory <laughs> approach. Uh, the main uh, objective of private uh, litigation in Europe should therefore be the recovery of losses uh, caused by the infringers, uh, but not the punishment of the infringers, which is done, um, if you follow the logic of the directive, uh, through public enforcement, i.e. fines imposed by competition authorities. And this was indeed a very important uh, clarification because it limits the available mechanisms to create incentives for victims to go to court. In particular, the approach limits uh, the risk of an introduction of a US-style litigation culture, which is based, as we, as we heard, on private enforcement that is mainly deterrence-motivated. And I skipped the last points that I mentioned here because Bojana <coughs> mentioned them. 